hello. If you are anything like me, you have a ton of happy planners and maybe don't know what to do with them. Or maybe you have a ton of happy planners and you thought they were so cute, you were unwilling to let go of them. And if that's you, I have a solution for you. I took my classic happy planner and I turned it into this cute guy right here. This is a um, cute little easel that you can actually change and flip and use all of those cute dividers that came in your happy planner. It was made using some recycled items, including the recycled rings that came from the original classic planner, all of the cute dividers that come in the happy planner, and using some cardboard that came from a calendar that I had. I actually bought the Joann's calendar that had all the really cool coupons at the end of it, and I took that. That's actually the perfect size um, because you can cut it in half, and you'll see that in the video. So if you have washi tape, if you have scissors, a ruler, a cutting mat, you can make this project as well. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Lori. This is my little channel where I share all things planning, crafting, and Disney related because those are the things that I truly, truly enjoy and I enjoy sharing those with others. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of your support. This past month has been just amazing. I've um, had so many people commenting on videos and subscribing and um, I'm really enjoying the conversations back and forth and I just I really truly appreciate your support so thank you so much for watching this video thanks for hanging in there to the end um, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and you want to see more of this every time you um, give a thumbs up you watch this video you leave a comment it lets YouTube know that you are supporting my channel and it lets me know what kind of content that you want to see. So um, thank you for being here. If you're new, I hope you consider subscribing. This is a, well, I think it's a really fun place to be and I would love to have you here. So I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and we'll see you at the end. I went through and found the dividers that I wanted to include in this easel. I used the classic planner dividers that I had from some old classic planners, some that I actually used, some were gifted to me. So if you're following along with this tutorial, the dimensions that I'm going to give you are specifically for the classic planner dividers. I trimmed the punch side first and I cut down the paper to six and a half inches and then I turned it to cut the part that had the divider on it and cut that down to six and a quarter. So I cut an additional quarter of an inch off. Note that you will have a little bit of the divider tab left on the actual image, but I felt that it coordinated enough with the image and it didn't stand out too much. So I thought keeping it would be just fine. Um, I did actually try to take it off by using a heat gun and to see if that would kind of release some of the adhesive and make it easier to take the divider off. Um, these are very, very secure, so there was no way it was gonna come off without actually taking the paper and the image off. So I ended up keeping it. Um, I did think about possibly adding washi tape to the edges. It could totally add a nice little pop of color and could actually hold the pages together, which you'll see a little bit later in the video. So know that that's always an option. Now, right here, you'll see that um, I was very careful with cutting this image because I wanted to keep the dance it out font um, all the way so I actually adjusted the cutting when I was actually cutting this page because I couldn't trim on both sides and not cut off the um, dance it out phrase so I wanted to be very purposeful in keeping that so that's the only thing that kind of popped up so just keep note of where your images are and what exactly you want on your final product. So now that everything is trimmed, I went through and I paired up the pages that I wanted to keep together. I wanted to try to keep all of the fitness images together and the summer images together, more of the seasonal images together. Um, there's a couple of crafting ones. I just wanted to make sure that no matter where I was um, or where I placed this, that 
from both sides of the easel, you kind of had a similar message, um, meaning I saw either a crafting message or a seasonal message, um, etc. So I just went through and I'm actually really glad that I went through to make sure that there were enough pages. Um, at first count, I thought I had the right number, but as I went through, I realized that I did not have enough. So I actually went and found a 12 by 12 paper from another pack and I used that to just cut out another image that I could place on the back of the joyful image in the top corner there. And I used the joyful page as my guide to trim out this 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that I had. I wanted to make sure that I trimmed it and was able to keep the images really whole and intact. I didn't want to cut just right down the middle of one of those little ornaments. So I just used the joyful page as my guide to know where to trim. So I then double checked the order and I'm very happy with the variety of images that I ended up with. I'm glad that I pulled from a couple of different planners so I'll have options when I'm flipping through and changing the images. The next step is to go ahead and punch the top of the page and I did use the big um, happy planner punch and since I have the big punch I want to make sure that you know that I'm actually using the guideline for the classic planner page. So if you have the blue classic planner punch. I don't know why that's t giving me a tongue twist. If you have the blue punch, then you'll just use the line that is your guide to punch each one of these pages. And I do recommend doing one page at a time. I tried to, pages got stuck. Don't make that same mistake. Um, then I just came in with the discs that I had from another planner and I began placing those in the punch dividers. I used the small rings for this project, but if I had a couple more pages, I definitely would have moved up to the larger rings and you can kind of see the large pink rings or the medium pink rings there in the top corner of the screen. Um, I was kind of debating which one I wanted to use. I ended up using the small ones because I felt like once I put them in, it just had a nice cleaner look. I felt like the medium ones would have been just a little too big, but you just go through and put all your pages in. So now it's time to start working on the easel that is going to hold and support the images that we have just cut out and trimmed down. So I took cardboard from a calendar that I purchased and I just cut it straight down the middle. I did use an X-Acto knife to cut this, but you could use a pair of scissors and easily cut this cardboard. If you don't have the cardboard from a um, calendar, you could use any cardboard that you have. So I also used the page as a guide to figure out where I wanted to score at the bottom um, to kind of make the folding part of the easel. My original intention was to cut out the board and actually have it be the exact same size as the page so that I could have it punched at the top and actually be a part of the easel just as the pages are. But once I started going in and I tried to punch it, it doesn't fit in the punch itself. I actually traced the punch lines and was going to cut it out by hand, but it felt like it just wasn't going to stay sturdy over time after I turned it and it felt like the cut just wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be. So I nixed that idea and I ended up cutting the cardboard shorter than the actual page itself and um, you'll see in just a bit that I end up having the page actually be what is holding it onto the easel, but gluing the page onto the cardboard.
When you're placing your pages on top of the cardboard, make sure that you line up the um, tabs at the top so that way the pages will turn nicely. So to make this look a little bit cleaner, I actually brought in some washi tape that coordinated with this page and I was really excited that even at this point I could use the easel the way it is right now. Um, but I brought in washi tape in different colors and I just covered it. This first time I went around I didn't really know what I was doing so I was kind of playing with it. Um, what I learned the second time around is to go ahead and cover the bottom part first and cover it with half of the washi on one side so you can just trim it and fold it over kind of like you're wrapping a gift and that way you will get the bottom part of that cardboard covered and it'll look real nice and clean. I also learned the second time around to just go ahead and place your washi on one side and then just wrap it around the other side. There's no need to cut and kind of double tape on both sides but this is fairly easy. You pick any washi tape that you want, anything that coordinates and you're not really going to see this as much anyway so it's just a little bit of a step to make things look a little bit cleaner um, i do definitely like the way that it turned out and i also end up using washi along the sides of the pages because i didn't want to be able to see from the side of the easel i didn't want to see the double pages so i did use some washi to clean that up as well So once that was done, I went through and did the exact same thing for the other half of the cardboard that I had cut, and that makes the second part of the easel. I placed these back to back on the original project, and that's pretty much it. Um, just go ahead and do the very last step, which is to glue the pages together, and I just placed one line of the glue runner along the bottom of the pages, and I felt that that's all that I needed to hold it together. I also didn't want to glue it too well in case I wanted to go back and change a couple of pages up. I considered also using some repositionable glue, so that's an option if you want to change your pages later or you can also do the washi tape along the side or even just along the bottom of the pages for a little added color. Now here I actually messed up and put glue runner at the bottom of the page that I actually wanted to be seen. So my quick fix was to just grab a little washi tape from another planner pack of stickers that I had and I thought that that was an easy fix. I was really happy with the way this project turned out. I think it adds a really nice pop of color in the room and I'm really pleased that you can change this and turn it around, see it from both sides. And I even plan on using some of those blank pages to put pictures on there and change those out. Okay, so if you made it to the end of the video, guys, what did you think? Please leave a comment down below. I really wanna hear if you felt this was an easy tutorial, if it was easy to follow. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for all of your support. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care, bye.